fathers. And these kids, how many kids in this country are growing up with no fathers? When I watch this group march through the streets and I listen to them as they scream and as they yell, and I look at them and I think, now look at them. Most of them are from 18 to 30 to 35 at the most. They're young people. They're fresh from the school system in America. They're fresh from the classroom in America. What were they taught while they were in that classroom in America? What was their teacher taught in that classroom in America? Why it does it surprise anybody that after 30 or 40 years, 50 years of kicking God out of school, no prayer, does it surprise you that you're reaping the fruit of Darwin? Nihilism. What is that? That is no beginning and no ending. No purpose in being here. These kids are marching in the street and they're brainwashed. They don't have a clue where they came from, where they're going. They live for the moment. They live by their emotions. Once you take a thinking capacity away from a person, they follow the crowd. They follow their feelings. They follow their emotions. Just the other day, they tore down the statue of a man who was a big abolitionist of the 1800s. They didn't know. They're just following their mother. They don't have a clue. They don't know what they're doing. But somebody said, here's another statue. Let's tear it down. And down it comes. America is going through the throes of a complete change. Today, June the 21st, in parts of this world is the summer solstice. In other parts of the world, yesterday was the summer solstice. It traverses because you have such a distance between parts of the world. Right now, the summer solstice is a very important day to the occult world. Stonehenge, you would believe how it's lit up. Every kind of a pagan and a witch under the sun is coming out for the summer solstice. You see, this is when the day stops getting longer. The summer solstice the longest day of the year. Then it starts to recede back and starts getting shorter. So it's an important event. It's as big as Halloween. It's the summer solstice. The witches, the Luciferians are calling for more demonstrations on the summer solstice. Listen to this. We're calling on every citizen on earth to stand in support of the formation of the one world government. So on June the 21st, what's today? 2020. We're calling on every citizen of the earth to march all over the place in support of forming a one world government. Where does it start? It starts with you, how you can help create your own chapter in your town. Plan marches, spread the word, forming a one world government, so forth and so on. Help do your part to support. This was written by Luciferian. Who's Lucifer, preacher? He's a light bearer. That's who he is. That's what the word means. Light bearer. Lucifer. Lucifer's a Latin word. Light bearer. The message out here in the street among these people is that you failed. Christianity failed. The church has failed. You haven't done what you should have done. Your God has failed, therefore. And it's all been a pack of lies in the Bible. It's all a misrepresentation of the truth. It's a Jewish Bible written by a bunch of Jews. So therefore, so therefore, you are woke. You know what woke means? W-O-K-E? What does it mean to be woke? It means all of a sudden I wake up. I realize what's going on. I see the wrongs that I didn't see last week. I understand the real purpose of what's happening. I'm woke. All right, so the Luciferians step in and they say, Lucifer is your light bearer. Lucifer is the one that will give you the way. He'll show you the way. They want to know the way. That's what one of them said. Listen to this. Respond to the demands of the people or prepare to be met with any means necessary. It's not a warning. I'm letting people know comes next it's not over it's just beginning I saw a sweat t-shirt a guy sent me an email the other day and he had a t-shirt this fellow had a t-shirt on he's out here marching with, with the group here's what it said and I'm paraphrasing I don't remember exactly the words but this was the message come back Jesus and we'll kill you again 
You see, these people are not indifferent to your faith. They despise you. Everybody in this country how wrong we are by their little experiment and they want the world to see it. And they're going to find out how wrong they are when they see it. Now this guy says, come back Jesus and we'll kill you again. Well, let me tell you something, mister. Revelation chapter number 19 and verse 11 says this. I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. <laughs> his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his head, on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God there's every reason to believe that when that horse comes back there'll be so much blood flowing that the blood will be upon the horse's bridle and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. They expect you to bow to them now. When he comes back, they'll bow to him then. Make no mistake about it. He'll come back and it won't be in peace. And it won't be as the Lamb of God. It won't be as the shepherd. It'll be as the Lord of hosts. He'll come back. Why? Because, do look out here. Do you think this crowd is going to give up anything to the Lord God Almighty? He'll take it with an outstretched arm. He gave you a type of it in Egypt. When he reached into Egypt and he took his people out and he judged every god of the Egyptians. And how did he do it? He put blood over the doorpost and lentils. And he took hold of them and he said with an outstretched arm, he reached in there and he pulled them out. Well, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He's going to come down and he's going to shout our names. Maybe today. And we're leaving out of this place. We're gone. It's called the rapture. It is a mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul. And I am looking for that coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to rapture his church. The more that happens, the more I'm beginning to be convinced we are nearing the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to pray about what God wants us to do here at Temple Baptist Church. We need to pray. Start praying. We need to pray, folks. We're under we're under attack. We need to pray. This is serious business. <laughs> we need to pray. Father, bless your word. Bless the folk gathered in the house today. Thank you for the opportunity that we still have free speech. They want to take it away. Political correctness would love to shut us down. So would Google, so would Facebook, so would YouTube, so would all of these social sites. They'd like to shut us down and close our voice for good. But Heavenly Father, you're the one that opens and you're the one that closes. We call on you because you can do it. And we trust you. We give you this church. I give you my life. I give you my loved ones. They're in your hands, Lord. And be glorified now. In Jesus' sweet holy name I pray. That the Father may be glorified in the Son.